Hello there, welcome to Tech and Cash. I hope you are doing well. So in one of the recent video, Flan from Winging It and I talk about the underrated birds in Wingspan. And today we are back to talk about the overrated birds. So how are you doing, Flan? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. So let's get this started. I have a feeling um, we might have some hot takes here. Are you ready for this one? I'm so ready. Okay. Well, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna kick kick this off with. I I think it's less controversial. So the first overrated bird on my list, um, I have the hermit thrush. Um, so it's the one that costs three food that gives you seven points. And then when you activate it, you get extra food if you have the least, the player with the least bird in their forest get an extra food. Um, again, this is just based on my um, open, based on my personal experience. Um, I find it really hard to play it, um, even if it's in your hand, because you have to pick up extra food to play it. And then you also always have to rely on what your opponent plays. So you have to rely on your opponent to play at least one forest bird um, to get use of it. Or ideally you want your opponent to have, you know, maybe like two forest bird to really maximize its usage. I don't know. I just find it kind of slow and a lot of waiting around when, when I try to start with this bird. It's kind of frustrating for me a lot of time. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't disagree with any of that. I think it can be quite difficult um, to get down. And certainly, you know, again, we talked a little bit about the Baltimore Oriole before, but I think it compares really well to that. And the Oriole, for me, kind of comes out on top in terms of points and yeah. also, you know, that, that power, you can always make use of it. Um, yeah, it, it, you do kind of force yourself down a certain path when you're playing something like the Hermit Thrush. And, it, yeah, it can be very difficult to, to utilize properly. Yeah, and... Yeah, it's also frustrating, like, e even with late game, um, three food for seven points is even not that great of a return. So um, maybe if you can make use of that star nest, that, that could be useful. But other than that, yeah, it's usually a pass for me. All right, Juan, do you want to tell us one of your overrated bird? Certainly. So I'll start with the Western Meadowlark. Oh, that's wow. the first one on my list oh, so wow. okay there's a few birds um that work like this where you get to lay two eggs in a certain color nest yeah. and everyone else gets to lay one and for me this is just not a great power and okay. it's one that i see a lot of people play because what they see is, oh i can get two points a turn from this yeah and you know there's very few birds in the game that can generate you two points in a single turn um, the issue for me that I have with this is that because you're getting those two eggs, it's just going to fill up your egg spaces so quickly. Yeah. And I think w at least with the base game where you're kind of catered towards building up a nice grass and engine that's going to get you resources as well as points. If you fill up on those egg spaces too quickly, then you force yourself to do something else. And it might be, you know, taking a weak forest or weak wetland action um and you're know, trying to play you know weaker birds just to clear out some egg spaces and yeah you know two points two food it's not amazing return and really i think you know this is the kind of power that actually in a lot of cases can help your opponent more than you because you know maybe they are waiting on an egg to be able to play a bird or you know discard for extra cards or something and actually if this bird is going to give them that extra egg then that can really help their tempo as well so are you picking on just the Meadowlark or all the other birds that have similar power? I would I would probably pick on um was it the Lazuli Bunting as well. Okay. That's kind of similar. I think for me, um that is a slightly better bird because if I'm thinking about building a strong grasslands, I can think of more birds that have the bowl nest yes. that is gonna work with that bunting. But so many times um, you know, with the meadowlark, and you're trying to lay eggs on these ground nest spaces, and you find, you know, this this might just be my own personal experience, but I run out of those spaces really quickly, and then you're either skipping the power, or you know, maybe you're only getting one egg from it, and you know, it's it's that really worth it. 
Um, for me, not so much. Obviously, a bird like the pleated woodpecker, completely different category because it's going in the forest and you know we know eggs are so difficult to get in the forest. So um, that for me gets a free pass and, and isn't overrated. But certainly these ones that go in the grasslands, um, for me, I think they, they are quite overrated. All right. Well, talking about eggs in the forest, the next bird that's on my list for overrated is the California quill. Um, right, here we go. All right. Listen Hot to take me. number one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I am very well aware that, you know, being able to generate eggs in your forest, which is the appeal of California quill, is, you know, a, a, a really great strategy. Um, but I, I think the thing about California quill is just the food cost. You, you, you need three food to, um, to play it. And the return is just quite low. Um, and then if you play in the grassland, it just doesn't match up with other birds that allow you to lay eggs. Um, they are just like way, way they are just like a lot more other birds that allow you to lay eggs and cost less food. Yeah, oftentimes what I what I what I see with the quill is that you know you need to gain food, and again they cost three food, and then you play it, and then you know in in the forest when you only get one egg at a time, sometimes you know you might you might outspend the eggs that you can generate from your forest, so you might be forced to lay eggs from your grassland anyway. So yeah, I mean that's a hot take for sure, but uh, I'm gonna back you up on this one. I have also got the quail on my list. I think it. It does fall in this kind of weird niche of getting eggs in the forest. And like we've said time and time again, you know, these are these are really good powers. Um, but certainly, like you say, the high food cost, you know, you compare it to something like a chipping sparrow or a morning dove. You know, that's one food and you can get it down straight away on that first turn and start gaining food and getting eggs. That quail, you know, just takes that extra turn. And, you know, if it's in the tray as well, that's one turn to pick it up one turn to get the extra seed and then it's only turn four once you've played it on turn three that you're allowed to actually start activating it and you know for for a bird that is supposed to really help your tempo at the start of the game by allowing you to get eggs in the forest when gaining food it really slows you down in actually just trying to play it so yeah this i find this quite a frustrating bird to to try and deal with in the early game yeah i mean good points about the tempo and again it also if you're if you are in a situation where you are not like fully committed to a force engine, I feel like just a few activation of the quill is not gonna be worth it, just for the food yeah. that you pay. Yeah, it's a big investment, and like you say, if you're if you're not gonna make the most of that by activating it very regularly throughout the game, then you can often find that. You know, you look at it at the end of the game, and you think, I paid three food there and I only got three points and a few eggs. Was that really worth it? Or, you know, could I have got away with um, a cheaper forest bird that maybe wasn't going to get eggs, but allowed me to save that food and, and use it better early in the game? Yeah, good point. All right, back to you, Flan. Tell us your next bird on your overrated list. All right, well, since we're on a very eggy theme, um, I'll stick with a with another eggy type bird, which is either the bed sparrow or the cassin sparrow. So these are both birds that go in the grasslands. They cost two food and get you three points and let you lay one egg on any bird. And kind of similar, I think, to um, the medal like I talked about before. You know, it's, it's, it's only three points for two food and actually the power itself, again, it's, it's generating more eggs in the grasslands when you're already gaining eggs. And I think it's, it is a bit of a problem because you think about the other actions. Okay, if I'm gaining food, I have birds that give me more food. That's great because more food is always good. I can use that. And the same for the wetlands. More cards is good because there's no limit on how many cards you can have in your hand or how many food you can have. But there is a limit on how many eggs you can have. It's based on your nest capacity. And so by running these kind of engines that have these birds that give you extra eggs, it kind of again like the medlock -like, is discouraging you from using that grasslands because you fill up on eggs way too quickly in my experience so i think these can be useful particularly with birds that let you discard eggs so ravens crows obviously killed in franklin's goal 
being kind of prime examples. Um, but in general, I think these are the kind of birds that I I really try to avoid. Um, but I see a lot of players using them and, and just running out on egg spaces, um, you know, much, much more sooner than they sh they should be. Yeah, and I, I, I think another common trap that, um, you know, some people fall into as well is try to build their grassland engine with multiple birds that produce eggs. Like you say, you already produce quite a bit of egg by default. And say you have two birds that produce like one egg each, um, you can really quickly overwhelm your egg space. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think there are some birds of this type that can work quite well. So... Um, you know, scaled quail is a good example. Northern bobwhite as well, and they work well because they they come with a lot of egg spaces themselves. Yeah. Whereas you know these two sparrows only two egg spaces themselves, and then you know they they're kind of not helping the problem. They're not giving you many egg spaces, but then giving you so many more eggs to fill up um, your existing spaces. So yeah, they they are quite difficult I find to work with. All right, moving on. All right, I'm going to save the more controversial birds for later. But the next one on my list is the king rail. Um, so, the, right. yeah, the king rail costs you three food, um, give you four bird points and a bonus card. Um, I mean, obviously, it's not like a bad bird. You, you get a lot of egg space and bonus card. But I, I think it's just not as good compared to other wetland birds that give you bonus card. Um, just because you are paying three food for four bit points to start with. Yeah, so especially if if you are in, in the space where you have to spend two eggs to 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 play the king rail, then suddenly you're starting with only two points um, to start with and then whatever points you get from bonus card. Um, I, I just find it not as good in late game compared to other bonus bird, bonus um, card bird. Yeah, I can't I can't disagree with what you've said. Um, this nearly went on my list. I think probably if this would be maybe number six or seven if I was going to extend it. Um, so it was on my mind. I think all the points you said are right. You know, it's it's not that many bird points, and you kind of find yourself gambling a lot on that bonus card. And if you draw a zero point bonus card. It's a huge waste of, you know, both food and eggs to try and get that down. And certainly for me, I think there's a lot of other good kind of high point um, wetland birds that you might play instead. So something like the night heron is a really good example, you know, similar kind of food cost. Uh, but you're getting nine points. Yeah. And when you think about you know, nine points versus four points in a bonus card, that puts a very high weight on that bonus card. And like I say, if you draw blank, that, uh, yeah, that's not a whole lot of points you've got and you've spent a lot of food trying to get that down. And and another mistake that I, I see some player makes is also forgot to take into consideration, say if they're gaining food using Raven or Crow, they are also spending eggs mm. to gain food to play like an expensive bird, like the King Rail. So once yep. you take away all the eggs points, um, yeah. The, the, the return is really not as good as you think. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be useful, I think, in grassland engines where you are laying a lot of eggs. You know, those egg spaces can really come in handy. But again, it is very situational. And yeah, in, in most cases, it, it is a big risk going for that bonus card. All right. Well, back to you, Flan. Back to me. And I'm going to go for, this time, the Eastern Kingbird. Oh, wow. So I think this might be quite a controversial one and might just be reflective of my time mostly spent playing two player games rather okay. than more than that. Uh, but so this bird, it gets uh, an extra worm for every forest bird played by, by another player. And yeah, I, I just find this, I find in general these kind of pink powers that give you uh, resources when someone else does something like this. They never come at the right time. Yeah. So, um, you know, I might play the kingbird turn one, expecting my opponents to then play loads of forest birds and I can get loads of worms. But it's it's almost a deterrent. So I might play that and then my opponent sees that and think, oh, I better not play that forest bird because they're going to get that worm. I'll do other things first, like I might start setting up my wetlands and drawing cards. And then you kind of sit there waiting and waiting and you, you're doing <laughs> these things yourself, waiting for this free worm. 
and eventually you give up and go for food anyway and then you get the free worm right uh, right right when you don't need it anymore yeah and you know that's just in the early game i think in the late game it's really annoying as well because you know there are a lot of these kind of big point or bonus card giving forest birds that people might play you know in the final round and quite often you kind of get that extra worm again when you don't really need it you know you might have already got the food you need or played everything you wanted to and you're not able to really make use of that so um, it's something i do see people play um you know relatively often but for me this is a bird i really wouldn't play unless i was absolutely desperate yeah i i, I think i can kind of agree to that um the 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 king bird it's oftentimes i think i think it's most useful say if it's in your hand and then you really need that bird in the forest or the wetland but I find that you know, for the reason that you mentioned, it's it's never really good when you when you try to pick it up from the tray or from the deck to play it, especially from the tray. If people see you pick up the king bird, they'll immediately try to slam down their forest bird. Or if you need to pick up food to play the king bird, it might have been too late already, and your opponent already play all the forest bird. Yeah, I think uh, you know as well. You can kind of compare it quite easily with the kingfisher. Yeah. So that's a similar power just in the wetlands and it gets you fish. Yeah. Um, but the kingfish is way more useful, I think. You know, it's more points. Obviously, it costs a little bit more food. But you, you really, you get that star nest and the, the huge number of egg spaces. That's kind of the value you get there. Um, the kingbird doesn't really kind of bring you that extra value. So you are relying on that power. And like you say, if your opponent is anticipating you playing it, um, they can really kind of screw you over based on you know the, the order of actions that they take. Yeah. All right. Good points next bird on my list i have a feeling you have this on your list as well but we'll see <laughs> so okay. the next one on my overrated bird list is the brand um which allow you to pick up three birds from the tray when you play it so that's this sounds... is this is this is not on my list so <laughs> this is all on you I take no responsibility for what you're about to say. All right, great. Now this is this is just <laughs> all on me. Um, I mean, th again, this is just based on my experience, and um, so when when you have the brand, um, I, I think again, it's it's most useful. Say you have it in your starting hand, and you see the starting tray. That's great bird in the tray, and you can pick it up and. Um, make the most use of it, but again, that would depend on what birds are in the tray, and and it's not very often that you know all three birds in the tray are great birds. So you might just end up picking like maybe one or two birds that you need, and really the the biggest downside of the brand is the opportunity cost that you pay. You know when you pick up three birds from the tray, you refresh the tray, so now your opponent get to see a whole new tray. So you know, better birds might show up. So e even if you pick up some good bird, you are also giving your opponent some, you know, option to pick, um, to pick up from. So for me, I, I just don't think it's worth it um, for three points and two food. Yeah, it's certainly a risky bird to play. And I think you know, we've all had games where we played the brand and revealed amazing cards for for our opponent and it is quite frustrating to deal with um, i think it it is still you know a reasonably strong bird um certainly compare it to you know something like the oyster catcher we talked about before or you know other birds of that type um they're already getting you two cards whereas whereas the brand is at least getting you three uh, i think if the power was just to let you draw three cards and so you could choose either the deck or the tray obviously it would be be a much stronger power um, like you say, it's, it is rare that there's going to be three birds in the tray that you're looking at. So um, I can I can understand why you've got it on your list, um, but I I still think it's a, a reasonably good bird. Yeah, I I think another another. How how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? Oh, how, I want to how, go. To... How how deep a hole do you want to dig yourself? Just just one more point. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, another another situation that I find myself in with brand is that you know I maybe say I have a bad wetland, and then I pick up the brand, hoping that you know in the next beginning of the round I can use the brand to pick up good birds from the tray. But oftentimes what happened is that the the tray was just like not good um, when when we refresh the tray, and now I just have a brand that 
you know, I intentionally pick up, but I don't want to play. So, yeah. Again, it might be more of a personal experience, but yeah, I'm I'm just not a fan. No, I think absolutely fair comments. All right, well, you've got your hot take out of the way, so it's time for mine. Uh, <laughs> on my list, I'm going to go with the Sandhill Crane. Now, listen out. Okay. Uh, I know a lot of people really like this bird. Obviously, in situations, it can be really, really strong. You know, turning some of that extra food, maybe that you're getting from a raven or a tohi or a junko, and being able to get points out of that. Uh, for me, I just find this really frustrating to deal with particularly sort of early mid game yeah. where you're trying to get food to play birds but you feel like you have to use it to get points and i think certainly in that early to mid game you don't want points you want resources and yeah. then you can use those to get more points as the game progresses so for me i think it is one of those i see players particularly with a raven will try and force this sandal crane down really early on but it's so difficult because, you know, when you play it, you need to make sure that you have the food to play it, but also that you have the food to be able to activate it next turn. And if you don't, you're already kind of missing out on those points, potential that you could be getting from it. And yeah, just kind of even a single raven and a crane where you're only getting that one food a turn, it can be so slow. And you find that your egg spots start filling up really quickly and the crane isn't helping towards that because it's only got one. So it does kind of, you know, accelerate its own problems um, with you running out of egg spaces before you can get food to do something. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I have been in similar shoe before as well. That that one additional food um, that you need to pay to play the crane, say compared to the Canada goose, yeah, really yeah. will slow down your tempo and take additional turn to set it up. And like you say, the... The one egg spot really doesn't help as well with your egg problem. So yeah, I can I can see that. Alright, so back to me, the final bird on my overrated bird list. Um, I think this might be a little bit unexpected. So the, the, the bird that I have on my list is the mallard. So um, I assume that's not on your list as well. <laughs> no, that 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 is unexpected so uh i'm interested to hear what you have to say all right well I, I i think it's not as controversial as you think it is i i think you know overall i can agree that mallard is a good bird it allows you to draw one extra card it's definitely still tier a just just based on my experience it's it just not as good as it should be i mean mm. i i think the way i look at it is like you know all right, so when you compare the mallard to, to, to other birds, say the sandpiper or the Wilson snipe, they each only cost one food and essentially give you the same resources. You get one extra card, but the Wilson snipe and the sandpiper give you five bird points to start with. Um, and obviously with the sandpiper, you, you, you give cards to your opponent. But again, because of the five bird points, it gives you a bigger window to play that bird. What I find with the mallard is, say, you know, in situation where you're in the mid game, you have a bad wetland, and the mallard can really help, but it really feels bad to play a zero point bird in the mid game. Yeah, I think, you know, certainly if you compare it to some of those other wetland birds, like you mentioned, the snipe and the sandpiper, um, but even something like the common yellow throat, you know, basically the same food. Yeah. Um, the yellow throat gets you a point, but also the power is better because you're looking at more cards. So it's certainly a downgrade in that respect. And yeah, I can I can understand what you're saying. It's definitely still a strong bird. Yeah. But certainly you compare it to the kind of other similar birds of its type. It's It's got a clear weakness in some area compared to all of those birds. Yeah, I, I'm so glad that you bring up the yellow throat power. Yeah, the, you can just feel it when, when you play, mm. you know, this bird, the, the difference is so huge. Like, even though essentially you're, you're gaining one card at the end, but having the ability to look through two card and pick one, it's it just so much better. Okay, I think that wraps up my list of overrated bird. Do, do you have any more birds on your list, Flan? No, I think that covers all the birds I was going to talk about, so yeah. 
Well, that wraps up our list of overrated birds in Wingspan. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Let us know if you agree or disagree or any other birds that we overlook. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.